Hi, I'm Jim Shulman and welcome to the Home Barista Bench. We are continuing our review of the Bezerra Strega, the lever machine for the home. In this section, we're going to talk somewhat about who should be buying this machine and who should be avoiding it. Um, we'll start with who should be avoiding the machine. Um, this is a lever machine and it requires effort to make a shot, about 50 pounds worth to draw down this lever. I had it at a meetup and nobody had any trouble pulling the lever. Um, men, women, small, tall, young, old. But if you're going to be doing this all day, um, it's going to be a strain. In particular, you want to avoid sticking your elbow out like this and going like this because you're going to do in your wrist and your elbow. You want to keep your upper arm parallel to the lever and pull with your knees and body like this. And then you're going to have no trouble. Remember that you don't only pull the lever down, but if there's no puck, this thing is going to shoot back up like a rocket, so you need to, when you're flushing and so forth, do it gently. The other aspect of a lever is that it's a very high item, the lever itself. So if you have it set up on a counter with cabinets on top of it, like I have here, you need to be very clever about positioning it so you don't block the doors. In fact, there is really only one spot where this thing can be, so that it's right here between the two doors. Um, if you're going to buy this machine, finding a freestanding location would just be a lot better. Um, the third aspect we will talk about at the end, it is that this machine is much slower making shot after shot than other machines. Now, why would anyone want a lever machine if it only has drawbacks? Uh, as a matter of fact, there are very few lever machines being used, either commercially or at home, because of these drawbacks. But uh, there is one huge advantage, and Bezerra, to their credit, has really added a has really added to this advantage by combining the pump and the lever. You can manipulate on a lever machine, you can manipulate the pressure in real time. You can watch the flow of the coffee and change the pressure on the pump as you go. There are only two other machines on the market, the Slayer and the Hydra, that do this with a variable pump. Now, Bezerra, by adding a 9-bar pump, has given the option of pre-infusing up to 9 bars, as opposed to 1 bar for a Boyer machine, or 3 bar for a line machine. Um, you can, so you can pre-infuse from 1 bar up to 9 bar. You can start the shot out at 9 bar, you can start the shot out at 7, you can finish the shot at any pressure you like. This allows you to do impossible coffees. Here is one impossible coffee, sort of the holy grail of espresso, the Panama Esmeralda Geisha. Uh, this coffee tastes like a washed Ethiopian, only better, and it's been selling at between $50 and $100 a pound. This particular lot is from last year and cost about $75. Um, and it doesn't make good espresso on a pump machine. I've made it harder by roasting this as it should be roasted for brewing. A very light roast, just a little bit out of the first crack, a little bit further than a cupping roast, but not much. As light a commercial roast as you'll ever see. On a pump machine, you would be running to the sink if you made this as an espresso. Now, I've pre-ground this basket. And... Uh, it is set to a grind that would, on a conventional machine, run at around 12 and a half grams, a very fine grind. The 
because of the pump uh, lever combination, this machine has a huge amount of punch. So the same grind requires a fill of about 17 grams. We're going to flush the group as we do on an HX machine until the boiling stops. First of all, we need to refill up there. And that's that. Now we are going to start the shot. The pump is filling the lever. We're going to let it go all the way up to 9 bar. And we're going to do that by listening to it quiet down here. Then we're going to bring up the lever. And now we're going to hold it back to keep this flow very much at a ristretto level. What we're trying to do is draw out this chocolate phase of the flow as long as possible. I have no idea what the pressure is at the moment. I'm holding back the spring and simply manipulating this lever to keep the flow as brown and as unpaled as possible for as long as possible. I am over extracting this to the last so that uh, all the caramels come out. And now we're about done, and now I can pull back the lever and stop the flow entirely and remove the cup. And here is the disadvantage, third disadvantage of lever machines. You see, you have to wait it out. Um, you can't start another shot until the flow is done. Um, so in the meantime, while we wait this machine out, we'll test this. Um, my god, is that good. Um, this is a fully paddable espresso version of the Esmeralda Geisha. It is creamy, it is concentrated, and it has all the subtlety and balance it has as a French press. Just a lot, a lot stronger and a lot creamier. It's as if you got the Esmeralda Geisha as a truffle at a Belgian chocolatier. I'm keeping this machine, so I expect my coffee budget to skyrocket as I use more, as I'm able to pull more and more of these exotic coffees. Oh. Oh, wow. Oh. In any case, back to the disadvantages. Oh. Oh, wow. um, we, you do get portafilter sneeze, but it's minor. You can hardly hear it. The reason for that is because of the built-up portafilter. The lip is extra high. And this restrains the run out. Even if you have to stop a shot halfway, you can avoid the worst of it simply by opening it slowly and letting the water leak out gradually, like so. But you see, it is still rather inconvenient. In effect, two to two and a half minutes per shot, as opposed to one to one and a half minutes per shot on a regular machine. But impossible espresso. Pushing the envelope, unless you buy yourself a Slayer or a Hydra, you're not going to be able to do this, period. Thank you for listening. And we'll be back with details on how to make these shops later.